the honor of being Mike's best man. Let me get my words out here, I'll never get through it. Brace <laughs> yourself. It makes me so proud to stand here tonight next to you, Mike, and your beautiful new bride, and all of our friends and family. Um, although I have been sweating this particular moment for several months now. I've been advised to keep it short and to not drink until after the toast. <laughs> but as I'm standing up here panicking, I'm thinking maybe a couple of drinks would have been a good idea. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do my best not to embarrass myself and to only embarrass Mike a little bit. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank Mike and Jordy's parents uh, for orchestrating this whole event. Uh, dinner last night was fabulous. Everybody had free time. Uh, I think you're all very brave souls for having an open bar with this crowd. <laughs> and obviously the ceremony today was perfect. We had a beautiful day, and it, it couldn't go any better. I'd also like to thank everybody for coming out here tonight from all over the country and from the world uh, to celebrate Mike and Jordy. Uh, it's been great to meet people from all different eras of Mike's and Jordy's lives and to finally put some faces with some of the names. I have to say you're a pretty intimidating bunch. We've got a PhD in particle physics, an ER surgeon, an architect, several economists. I've been cautious to not open my mouth too much for fear of looking like a fool. Uh, but I think I found the key of not looking like, looking like a fool is to stand next to the mic all the time. <laughs> Don't worry, Mike. I'll make you look good later. Dance <laughs> uh, you probably will find this hard to believe, but there is a worse dancer in here than Mike, and it's myself. <laughs> Mike and I first met in our freshman year of college, but we really didn't get to know each other very well that year. Uh, I only knew Mike as our team captain. Focused, driven, intense, dedicated, and incredibly hairy. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the exact polar end of the team roster where I held down the bottom spot in team domination pretty consistently. Uh, it wasn't really until our sophomore year that I learned that Mike throws himself with the same enthusiasm and the same ethic into everything it, that he does. Uh, not just rowing and exercising, but also studying and more dear to my heart, heavy drinking. <laughs> I've been warned to not go into too much detail telling old stories. And Mike, uh, really it is rather too easy to roast you up here. I mean, every person in this room has some embarrassing story of life. Uh, but there are some uh, mental snapshots that I'd like to share that I personally enjoy. Don't worry. One February, Mike ran the Frigid Five, which is a 5K race in uh, Minnesota. And I know for a fact several people offered uh, hat or gloves for Mike to wear during the race, but he rather confidently assured them that he would have this race wrapped up before his hands, hands had a chance to get cold. <laughs> uh, he came home with his hands so frostbitten that they were like wax. And uh, thick chunks of burnt skin began to peel off. <laughs> he actually couldn't even make a fist, which meant he couldn't hold a pen or a fork or unzip his fly. <laughs> the, the fork wasn't such a big deal because we all know Mike prefers just to kind of shovel food. <laughs> but I will say the, the, the fly thing got a little bit wearing after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Years ago, Mike and I went to an underwear party hosted by the women's rowing team. And we lived just on the block, so we went there in our underwear. And I think I still have the black G string with the silver whistle on it. <laughs> and I have this, this crystal clear image in my head that I'm not really sure that I want there of Mike sitting on a couch in his underwear, with a bottle of Fleischmann's vodka and a straw in it. <laughs> <laughs> so later on that night, 
five o'clock in the morning, uh, our door <laughs> broke down, and uh, there were two Madison police officers propping Mike up in his underwear, <laughs> and uh, they had found him passed out on the corner of University and Breeze Terrace. <laughs> I still can't believe that they actually allowed somebody in a black G-string to sign from your request. Mike, it's probably a good thing that Jordy didn't meet you in college. <laughs> because whenever we went out socially, you were largely unintelligibly drunk. And because no self-respecting woman, much less as beautiful and well-put-together woman as your new bride, would have dated any of us. Jordy, I, I have only two pieces of advice, which I'm sure you already know. Uh, one is to stay on top of his manscaping, especially the shoulder hair. <laughs> if the shoulder hair gets out of control, you have to take a weed whacker. <laughs> and second, Mike will do absolutely anything for you, especially if he's rewarded with food. <laughs> As it turns out, my first impressions of Mike freshman year were dead on. Um, he is a focused, driven, and dedicated guy. And they say that relationships take work, and no one will work harder to make you happier than Michael Pete. Um, and Jordy, I know you share these same attributes. Mike, Jordy, just like you, uh, knows what she wants, and she's driven to go after it. And tonight, she's been driven to marry you, which says something very special. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, let me read the toast to the bride and groom, to Mike and Jordy. Salud.